the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We're pleased to have our young people here who are part of our Sacrament of Confirmation program with us to celebrate this Mass of All Saints Day. We just ask, I'll make this announcement at the end of Mass, if you're here as part of our grade 7 through 12 class at the end of Mass, if you would just check in with us. Um, we just are trying to take attendance as well. We're not taking attendance for anybody else, okay, just for our young people who are here, uh, and I'll remind you of that at the, end of, at the end of Mass as well. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You alone are the Holy One, you have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. John saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Until we put, I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had heard the vision of a great multitude which no one could count. From every nation, race, people, and tongue, they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated at the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's 
Our second reading from the first letter of St. John. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall, we do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the, word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of slander against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. At the time of high school or college graduation, did someone speak to you? Did somebody get up to the microphone and give what was called the commencement speech or the graduation speech? Perhaps you remember this, your own or one, somebody in your family, you sat through a commencement speech. It may seem odd to call it a commencement speech because it's happening at graduation and everything seems to be ending. But this comes from the Middle Ages when uh, that it's, people started calling it the commencement speech, that is those who were graduating were going out to start or to commence giving instruction. They were going out to be teachers. And in the Sermon on the Mount, which we have just heard here in the Beatitudes, Jesus is sending, going to be sending out his disciples as well. Jesus has just been in the desert for 40 days and now his disciples are around him, but he's gonna be sending them out to be teachers. Jesus gets up at the equivalent of a microphone, but it's not a microphone, it's a mountain. This is the Sermon on the Mount. One of the things that a good commencement speech does or a graduation speech does, it helps the students to memorize something about having their mission going forward. But they're not being asked, to, you the students, when you're at a commencement speech, you're not really being asked to take notes, but you are asked to remember something. In an academic setting, whether it's Seton Hall University or Stanford University, the commencement speaker is often somebody who is famous, perhaps wealthy, successful. We might say the person is blessed, blessed. For most of us may not remember what was said at the graduation speech, but we sometimes remember the personality or the celebrity who spoke at the commencement speech. We often equate, often equate blessing with prosperity. And Jesus of, Jesus, of course, has a different definition or blessing. My brother, when he graduated from college, he remembers this about the commencement speaker. The commencement speaker was somebody who was an author. I think his name was John Guare. He was a play, Broadway playwright. I don't remember what he wrote, but I do remember his name. And I also remember that this commencement speaker said something that his father said to him, and it was what my father was saying to my brother at the time of his graduation, which was this, just get a job. Just go out and get a job, which is typical advice to parents on the day of graduation. To their so, but Jesus doesn't want to simply tell his disciples, just go out and get a job, okay? He does want that. He is inviting his disciples to work. He is inviting us to work for him, but he also wants us to discern and understand what he's asking us to do and to know that we are blessed. In this moment, the disciples have been to school for some time. They know the commandments. The beatitudes that they are told are not a replacement for the commandments, but rather telling them about the reward of following the commandments. And at a commencement speech, that's what the speaker is doing. He's telling the students, you the students, this is the reward. You did your homework. You made it to graduation. And the reward is that you're now going to have more work to do. Okay. Now, what students want to do on commencement weekend is often just to throw a party, but commencement is also to remind the students that they have work to do 
and that we have work to do. And there is a reward in following the commandments, the reward of things like this, loving someone to the end. Jesus says, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. He also says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. These are examples of loving to the end, loving to the ultimate. Is that easy? It's not easy, but it is the work we are being called to do. Jesus is also saying that he's also giving us sometimes the the message that we're not expecting to hear in these examples of what is being blessed. Jesus says, blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. The fact that there is a reward or a gift in mourning or sorrow may surprise us. We may want to avoid mourning or sorrow. If we can, the more mourning, if I can minimize my mourning and sorrow, then I can maximize my comfort. Doesn't that make sense to you? you who took a logic class or a mathematics class, you want to minimize certain things and maximize other things. But Jesus is saying, no, that's not the Christian way. The Christian way is to recognize that we can experience sorrow, sadness, but we can also experience consolation and that we don't go through mourning and sorrow. We don't go through death and dying alone. We need the help of others. And I have been blessed to, be particip- to participate in the lives of many of you at times of mourning and sorrow. I have been blessed to have you in my life as well, to comfort me, to build me up. The Beatitudes in this way are not just extracurricular activities but, or after-school activities. The Beatitudes are a program for our lives. And they are meant to be something that we would reread, read and reread regularly to understand what Jesus is calling us to be, that we are called to be his disciples, and that we are called to be saints. Today is All Saints Day. But All Saints Day is not just a reminder to, of those who are canonized and those who are in heaven, but that saintliness and holiness is the call for all of us. And we practice saintliness and holiness in many ways. It's not simply by doing things that are spectacular or may get our names in the newspaper. We can practice saintliness or holiness simply by loving someone, the example, loving someone to the end. Think about somebody loving somebody who's sick, going to visit somebody in the hospital, taking care of an elderly relative. These are saintly actions that help us on our way to heaven and help us to know that we are not alone in this world. Jesus calls us to be his disciples. He does give us work to do, but he also wants us to know that we are not alone and that he's going to help us with his grace and his mercy on our way to heaven. Our profession of faith, the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers before God's altar. We pray for all those who are sick for their healing and strength we pray lord hear our prayer for all elected officials for all those seeking elected office tomorrow election day and for the the, 
for freedom and peace, true peace, and the, the good of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For, um, for all school children, school teachers, for safety and health, for all of us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal rest of Carmen Napolitano, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. Please join in singing number 721 in your hymnal, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. 
Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the Church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland, through Christ our Lord. We ask you, if you are part of our class, the grade 7 through 12 class, if you would check in with Monica by leaving on the, to the doors to your, to your left on this side, uh, come up and, and see Monica on your, on your way out. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just a reminder, tomorrow, All Souls Day, we remember, we pray for all those who have died. There will be Mass tomorrow for All Souls Day at 8.30 a.m. in the morning and 7 p.m. in the evening with the annual reading of the names, 7 p.m. Tuesday, November 2nd. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.